the Kibalian, study of hermetic philosophy of ancient Egypt and Greece. First, I want to talk about the author because author chose to be anonymous and I believe that author is a single person, not multiple authors or anything like that. And author most likely was born into Christianity and used to be a Christian for some period of his life because he uses Christian principles a lot at the beginning and thought he claims that these cultures and religions probably just took stuff from ancient Egypt which was one of the ancient civilizations. He mentions certain great man being who lived uh, apparently 300 years in Egypt. You know, I take this type of thing uh, with a grain of salt. I mean, he doesn't even bother to provide any whatsoever sort of proof for his claim as if like he expects people to just read it and just believe it and i guess um, some people will just read it and be like okay whatever i believe it and uh, i think that later in his life he left the christianity because i don't think when he wrote this book he was actually christian and he left christianity and i think he studied a lot about buddhism and hinduism because when he tries to explain the certain principles he uses sort of these Christian lenses and sort of these religious lenses still. And I thought, you know, Buddhism is not a religion, it's a way of life. And Buddha is not a god, but a teacher. But that's a, another conversation altogether. But the point is that, you know, we have uh, Buddhism, for example, where Buddha is an enlightened being. And I believe that people that like this book, they will like even more if they were to read the Buddhist books and uh, teachings of, you know, if, if you really resonate with this book, probably if you were to read Buddhist books and learn about Buddha and learn about life of Siddhartha Gautama and understanding and his view of life, probably would resonate toward it much more than you would resonate to this book. As well, what annoyed me was the author way of using Christianity and claiming that he's not trying to convert anyone to Christianity at the same time. He's saying that, oh, I'm not trying to convert anyone to Christianity, I'm just sharing these uh, stories uh, here, just take. And then I thought I genuinely resonated with some th sayings and quotes which he uses. I didn't resonate necessarily with his way of explanation, and that makes sense. For example, he quotes uh, some hermetic sayings such as, so above, so below, so within, so outside. Sayings I knew it for a long time ago, in fact, it is one of my favorite sayings, within, so outside so above, so below. But the way author later follows and tries to interpret this explanation deeply annoys me because it's his subjective weave. He talks about some exalted and great beings that lived for 300 years and etc. They were immortals and were made God in Egypt. But who is he himself? Who is he to appear to be a messenger or someone sort of tries to interpret these great sayings. Who, who are you with yourself? I mean, why do you hide yourself? Are you ashamed of your teachings so you don't want to reveal yourself? It, it is, you know, it is always sort of weird. Why do you have to stay unknown? Like, what's the reason? For example, I show my face, you know, my nickname is Iveriel on YouTube, but my real name is Georgi, my last name is Kakushadze. You know, I don't hide these things, you know, I'm recording this video, I stand for it. But why did author choose to hide his name hide everything about him like there to be two logical explanations one explanation is that author did not wanted people to pay attention to him but the teachings itself and that could be a reasonable explanation but it does still wouldn't make any sense why would you i do your name or another thing would be that author had some circumstance where his life would have been in danger if he had published it under his name so he chose to be anonymous or simply he feared the public opinion or why i mean if it's like if you are telling the world something very important, you might as well stand toward it with your seal. It's like if you were to receive a letter and somebody is telling you something very important. You will have a seal during ancient times that it meant that this is the person and this is a great house or great king or whatever that sent this letter. And the seal represented that. So we have here a manuscript without a seal. Manuscript exists and there is something written on it, but we don't have a seal. But by seal, I mean a person. No matter who the person is, it, but the person that stood up and said, I am the one and I am standing behind. We don't have it here. We have some ancient sayings, which I resonate myself, which I like, and I'm going to talk about it right now. But we don't have a person. And I don't like his explanations of the way he tries to interpret these things, because who is he to stand between me and the universe, between me and the world? He does not say who he is. Everything vibrates. You know, nothing stands still in this universe. And uh, everything is sort of vibration. And we know this uh, based on modern understanding, that everything has its own frequency. And we know, for example, that dolphins uh, communicate with each other in a certain way. 
which might not be we might not be able to understand it but they understand it so certain frequency needs a certain receiver and author by the way what he does often is that he says something and he says that this principle is most important like which one is the most important principle I have all this question all the time I think it which one is the most important principle then? everything vibrates so the listener needs to be ready to receive the knowledge and when you are ready to receive a knowledge a master appears and this is what he says here in a different way of so when years are ready the teacher is there teaching is there when years are ready and it is true everybody is on his or her journey and everyone has their own time and some people might never some people might and most people simply choose to stay in permanent ignorance and for whatever we are going to call the universe, the karma, the dharma, whatever just does not allow them to understand certain stuff, at least not in this life. Maybe there is another lives, maybe there is many other different forms of existence. And author also claims, by the way, that there are some different beings out there in different planes and worlds, but only thing that matters is the law, the law is supreme. What is the law? It's like every that rules or is everything. You know, it's like author wants to convince us that these old great teachings come from Egypt and Greece, but actually there is four great sources of civilization in this planet known. Egypt definitely was one of them. But so was uh, Hindu civilization, which is also ancient civilization. And I believe that there was another... Uh, civilization no which was in mod in today's iran i forgot the name of that civilization and there was one more and some civilizations that people claim that existed but greece and greeks mentioned for example the atlanteans but you know and to this day there is a debate what happened there and where is this that civilization exactly but let's not um, focus on that let's focus on this great teachings because i again i believe in this teaching, teachings and i find them interesting you know so above so below you know this uh, saying could be interpreted in many ways and the way i understand it is this so the mind so your actions so below meaning so you behave and so above at the same time could mean so spiritually and so physically so within so outside your the way you feel right so the outside appears to you it's like if you live in the darkness everything appears for you some people sink so deeply to darkness when they pursue wisdom pursue teachings and they end up becoming arriving in a very dark place for whatever reason they look at everything as means to an end mentalism idea that everything is mental now this is quite interesting and debate debatable topic whether the world is mental or not the word the, the saying say it's like saying that when i die it's not like uh, the world stays and I disappear, but opposite. I stay, the world disappears. Because the world exists because I am here. Because I exist. Right? If I did not exist, I would not need know whether the world exists or not. And I have no way of checking whether the world would exist without me. Because I would not know the answer. Of course you would, but I would not know that you would know the answer. It's quite paradoxical. The principles which he talks about, such as principle of transforming the one you hate into the one that loves you, is sort of a principle of looking at taking things in a different way. It's like doing magic or alchemy. So the point is that no matter which side we choose, it is part of the same monad, love or hate. And fundamentally it's one and just like it changes, right? If it, the, here it's hate and here it's love, you know, it could change. It can change from, you know, it could change from love, neither, or hate. It could change. It could become hate, it could become neither, it could become love. And that's how life happens. Nothing just stays still. So it could swing or move, should I say, to different directions. And that's, why I, how, that's how I interpret it. And again, this uh, pretermetic saying does not belong to the author and this saying existed way before him as he explains it. Now, as for the universe and the fairness... I have my doubts and my questions about it. And uh, so far at this point, as of who I am today, I personally think this way about it. the life itself is not fair. And I don't think that anyone with reasonable mind would consider life to be fair. 
And in fact, I had this and I have this theory that one of the main reasons why idea of God, idea of reincarnation, idea of heaven and hell is so attractive for many people is that we have understand there are people that deserve punishment, but they are not punished in this life. So we think that if they are born as rodents in next life, or if they are burning in hell forever and ever, that would be fair. And maybe we don't, want, we don't see it, but there will be some sort of a supreme justice. Because if there is no supreme justice, then it is just so unfair. And I'm not even trying to, or arguing against it. Like, there are so many cases of just evil people doing absolutely evil things. And at least on the surface, it doesn't appear that they get anything back being rewarded in this life. And in having an amazing life. And in fact, they are, some of them are quite respected for quite some time. And some of them are respected for centuries as some sort of wise and smart and compassionate beings. Uh, and while in reality, they were just the materials, uh, people were just, you know, villains are definitely remembered as heroes, at least some of them, or some like irrelevant people are remembered as heroes, while the people that did the real job are not remembered at all. Problem of silent evidence, which means that like, if I did a good job and I did such a good job that it avoided, let's say, a plane crash or catastrophe cause some sort of disaster and if i did such a good job that i avoided it the point is that i will never know it because i did such a good job that i avoided it so you don't know anything about me right now or i don't know anything about the type of person or we don't know anything about that type of people because they did such a good job but if they fail if people fail and they do a horrible job we will know about it because some disaster happens and next later everybody starts to play the blame game and point the finger at each other Injustice. Injustice is quite quite a thing, right? A lot of people simply choose to not look at it or to look at another side or they're brainwashed enough that they just want to see the beautiful world and stars and etc. And yes, I also prefer to look at the moon and look at the stars, but you know, if you, instead of looking up, look down, you, know, you would see quite a lot. A lot of course assuming you have the ability to see it and um, you know if you look at the conquerors and etc people that are probably quite respected in their own countries i mean eh, they brought so much unnecessary suffering absolutely unnecessary suffering all nations have a violent character and violent and some nations have violent past and victim past as well and you know, most of the time, the great nations, they are the ones that win. They are the dominant ones and they suppress and destroy the other ones. And you know what empires really are is the continuation of our savage past. Of course, every citizen, for example, if you're, if you're a citizen of that empire, you consider your empire to be just. And that's where paradox comes, right? Human beings hate the oppressors. What people usually don't mention is that human beings definitely hate oppressors but there is an important point human beings hate oppressors when they are the ones who are oppressed if they are not the ones who are oppressed by the oppressor they don't hate the oppressor they admire the oppressor they are the ones that we have the gladiators arena and for them it just becomes just a show so how you want to interpret it but you have to understand that um, you know if if you were a gladiator <laughs> And you had to fight without your bare hands to the lions and tigers and other spectators looked at you. You would definitely hate the spectators far more than you would hate the tigers. And you would hate the ones that initiated this project far more than you hated the ones that looked at you or the tiger and lion in front of you. But do you know you would hate even more? You would hate your fate because at the end of the day, fate the unseen or what which author calls the law is the one that decided the places on this grand board of go or chess your role was decided you know it's it's it is how it is and your role could not be changed it would be interesting if spectators understood that they could easily be in the place of the gladiator or place of a lion and only then they are not the ones who decided their place in their life all is thoughts but what puts thoughts into our head is our own upbringing and the way we, are, we develop and we can claim that these thoughts are quite unique quite different but so did other people of other culture also took their own thoughts the way you take yours right now there were 
billions of people before you and there might be billions of people after you you know there are different beings probably i mean it would be just ridiculous to believe that we are alone in this universe and there are no other different species i mean odds of that i mean we are only thinking species in universe <laughs> living in this world the thinking creatures some of us who are capable of thinking and looking at it and it's and i cannot just look at their same things and not to be emotional about it i just take as it is but when there are so many claims in the book without like bothering to provide any evidence you know at some point just call it a fiction or just identify something yourself at least and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you have not already